if you're an Indian like me, you're probably thinking it is horrible that George Floyd got killed by a police officer. We kind of leave it there. Hey, because it has never happened to me, nor to the people I know. So why should I care? I'm not going to go to these crazy protests. You have every right to feel that way. So in this video, I'll talk about why brown people don't get shot by the police officers. My name is Aditya Gute, speaker and a performance coach for engineers. A couple of years ago, I got pulled over by a cop and I was driving through South Carolina and I wasn't even speeding. If I don't open my mouth, people typically mistake me for a Latino. So I got pulled over and the cop walks towards me with his hand on his gun. Being an Indian, guns make me piss in my pants because guns are illegal back in India. So I started panicking. When the white officer saw me panicking, he took his hands off the gun, leaned towards the window of my car and asked, do you know why I stopped? Sir, no sir. You've been tailgating. I'm like, oh, sir, what, what gating, sir? Do you speak English? You're too close to the car in front of you. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. What do you do? Sir, I'm a software engineer, sir. And then he let me go. He was super rude all throughout the conversation. And my only response was to panic. I didn't challenge him that I wasn't tailgating. How could I be tailgating if I wasn't even speeding in the first place? I didn't challenge him about the irrelevant questions about my job that he asked. I didn't accuse him of racism. In another incident, a gentleman yelled at me, what's that smell you curry boy? When I knew I haven't eaten Indian food for a couple of weeks at that time. Several such incidents continued to happen. My only response was to panic, profusely apologize and feel guilty about the mistake I have made. Looking back on that incident with the police officer, I think he let me go because I was scared. But if I spoke like a normal person and challenged him for asking me irrelevant questions and accused him of racism, for stopping me without any reason, I might have gone down in history as a brown man who got shot by the police officer. However, that didn't happen because I followed the training from my parents to stay out of trouble. So here is the bottom line. At least those of us Indians living here in the US we are scared to speak up. We are scared to look like a joke. We are scared for life. So we became an engineer so we can look like a success and stay out of trouble. Those fears affect us in many ways. But the focus of this video isn't about how our fears keep us in a narrow lane. But it is about why officers don't shoot brown people. And I think it's because of our fears which protect us. Not always. Just like you can see in the case of this 57-year-old gentleman, Suresh Bhai Patel, who visited his son in America, was slammed to the floor by this police officer for taking a stroll in the neighborhood. The police officer was back on duty in a couple of months with 
no repercussions while Suresh Bhai Patel suffered partial paralysis. Except for a few exceptions like Suresh Bhai Patel, staying fearful most likely works. If you experienced a similar situation in America and you remain silent, it is not your fault. We've been trained by our parents and society to not get into trouble, that our lives are the most precious thing in the world, that the purpose of our life is basically to not die. Real change happens when people like George Floyd stands up for himself. From north to the south, east to the west, there are protests about equality. Real change happens when you make your voice heard. While we Indians take immense pride in our education and wealth that we create here in America, I think we should pay our due respect to the black community influencers like George Floyd who create the real change. The protests by black people in the past are the reason racist policies like Jim Crow have been abolished. Brown people now enjoy the freedom because black people once fought for it. Gandhi says it is easy to stand with the crowd. It takes courage to stand alone. Make your voice heard. You deserve to be treated with respect and equality. I do understand it takes some time to muster up the courage to be able to speak up. You might not be able to go to your boss tomorrow and say, boss, please respect me. Until the time you muster up the courage to speak up, let's support our black community in their efforts to promote equality. Whether it is through joining the protests or making a donation or just educating yourself. I would also like to give credit to my cousin Sanj and the organization South Asians for Black Lives for helping me stay informed about the contribution and the greatness of Black America. If you like the video, please like, subscribe or share the video to promote awareness.